This is a very strange location. It's like a hidden gem. There are things here uh, that have happened. The stories are fantastic. The apparitions are supposed to be great. So why have we never heard about this place before? Bit of a mystery to me. Mm. We've got a white lady that haunts the pond, uh, a little lad that also um, wanders around the pond. We've got a blue lady on the staircase, um, a dark shadow that um, haunts the, the landing. But the amazing thing is it's, it's virgin territory because nobody seems to know about it. And, and so I shudder to think what might happen tonight. Some weird stuff's happened already in the barn when we were doing a piece of camera. Stuart told me that he witnessed and felt and saw some stuff. But then when we were de-rigging, I was in there on my own, and you did feel a sort of aggressive atmosphere. You did feel as if there was something there. I did hear a few things clattering up the side of walls, but I don't know if it was just people walking past. Uh, there's lots of animals kicking around here. So you can't put it down to anything paranormal yet. You've got to keep an open mind at all times. So. I'm just going to show you now. Sorry about that. My, my, my camera actually turned off then for a minute. Um, it, the thing totally went blank. I thought um, the battery wasn't charging it. I've just switched it back on and it's got 290 minutes. Um, now the way I'm holding this camera is I'm not holding it from the back. I'm actually holding it from the front. You can't see it, but you know there's no way um, I can turn it off the way I'm actually holding the camera at this moment in time. So it's quite funny really, me talking about the stone incident, the plough being shifted, and all of a sudden the camera's just turned itself off. Um, I've not turned it off, you've, you've, honestly you've got to believe me. When you're standing in this barn you do actually feel as though there's someone in here with you. You know, you're not on your own, you know, there are eyes, but where they are, Christ only knows. Um, this is going to be a fantastic location. Just put in uh, David Wells's radio mic on. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with him today. He's been in a terrible mood. So not true. Uh, it's been. We're just trying to get on with it. We're trying to do our jobs. Poor Kath was trying to do his makeup, and he was. No, don't do it like that. No, 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 not that. Not that. You're such a liar. He's, such a he's, liar. It's happening again. He's going liar. again. So they're not belonging to the house. Don't feel as if they belong to the house. I think actually, tell lie. I think the mother. Was that? I heard that. What was it? It was a. My tape just stopped for no reason. Though. Yeah, that's. It's, uh, it's not is the that batteries. what you heard? Yeah. Can, can, can I just? Uh, I don't want to interrupt the batteries. I, I actually understand. did a piece of camera on my own because something happened in here. And when I was doing the camera on the the handheld mini camera, the whole thing turned off. I actually mentioned that on camera, and that was just behind where you were, Eva. So it's coincidence with what's happened to John. So look, jump. How long would the battery normally last? Both 100% and it's drained the back one. The back one's on one, on, on sort of, on 20%. This one is on 60%. But these would easily last by four pounds. How would you explain that? Well, that is, how would I explain that? i say it's drained, for some reason that's drained twice, at least twice or three times as quickly as usual because normally we get through a whole run and we've only been to one place, haven't we? Yeah. We would normally, minutes, we'd, we'd, I, we've got through two tapes and not had to change batteries before and they've been, when they've been full in the same state. But this time, this has drained maybe three times as there, there are only There are only two reasons for it. If you go down the paranormal route, then it's, it's like there's, there's, some, there's some energy, some energy feeding, off of, feeding off of it. You go down the other end, the batteries are faulty. That is the only two options. And the tape, tape ports sort of, as well. Any sort of electrical charge drain it? But there's nothing in there. I've been no. down there before. Electrical the... charge wouldn't drain it. The only thing you could possibly drain it would be it's some magnetic charge. It could possibly drain it, but it has to be very, very powerful. And the strongest part is upstairs in the landing, and that's not going to be strong but you'd enough you'd to reach there. over here, is it? Yeah. But you'd also have to have this right next to a very strong magnetic oh, charge. Right. Okay. The technical difficulties with the camera, because it's physical, um, it's physical evidence. I don't know if it's physical evidence of anything paranormal, but certainly you speak to Carl, you speak to John Dibley, and they're both people with uh, a lot of camera experience, and they said they've never seen anything like it before in terms of 
the batteries draining, but more importantly, the tape on John's camera kind of stopped starting. There's the little boy, I think it's a, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> what was it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> little boy's running around. Is that what you saw or felt? No, I just felt uh, something here. Well, he's moving around. He is moving around. Um, thankfully taken off the... Because he was presenting with those sodden clothes and a woeful look. He's taken that off now. He's just like a little boy. Um, and there's a very stern woman. Oh, I don't like stern women. They scare me more than stern men. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God, this is so much You've worse. This. All the way around, it's getting worse. It's obviously associated to the house. What is it? A it's like a stabbing pain just here, just right there. There's a, there's a stern, very, very... Um, she's very matriarchal, but she's still quite young. She's not an old woman, very authoritative woman, who's looking at me in a very sort of accusing manner. Well, to be why honest. would she look at you like that? Well, she's, she's trying to give me visual clues. Oh, what, uh, right, so... It's a very see. judgmental way. She's, she's uh, not judging me. Yes. What does she look like? You mentioned her, uh, her uh, strict... She looks very sort of strict. She's presenting initially. She's present, present there, went up, and now in my head she's putting images of... She's got her skirts up, showing her lady bits. What meaning? She's a bit of a slapper. Oh. So she liked to have sex a lot? Yes. Do you want to go upstairs? I don't know if she's the Follow same her. one. Uh, do you know what I mean? I, I don't think she's the same one from outside because the name's similar. It's like Marie or Marie or, or something. You're talking like about that. the horse riding accident. She's not the same as that lady. She's not the same as that lady, but this one's name is, is that Marie M? or Marie or like, Perdue or Perlu or something like that. I can't quite get it. It's a funny, funny story. Very odd name. Very odd names. Yeah. Should we follow her up the stairs? I think we should definitely go up the stairs. OK, let's do that. David is so accurate and so good. Almost every week, there was this, this the experience was getting more, he was getting more stuff. And now it, it's, you know, he's picking up accurate names, names that we haven't got and we're finding out later on. Um, so we, we just, he picked up on a little boy that's, that, that was drowned here. Now we, we did have that name. Um, and yet he's, he's actually picked up on the parents' names, which is something we had to find out. So even we didn't have a lot of that information that he's, that he's picked up on. A henchman, like a henchman character. That's what I was saying. We've got to go. We need to go. <laughs> Are you still suffering? Well, I just had a quick uh, piercing because one out here. I've just, I've just got it as well. It's like right under there and there I've got. What have I just been doing out here? I've just been standing out here going with her jaw. We're just like that. that. It's, it is. It's right under there and right on my ear. You know when you're trying to pop your eardrums yeah. and you go like that? That's yeah. what I've been doing and yeah. it hurts like a gland. Yeah, yeah it... absolutely. See? It's like a sharp pain there and a pain in my ear. See, when... Oh, it's so sore. Do you know, it's either broken neck or it could be... It can't be hanging because that's not... My prompt for hanging is just that burning here. The bizarre so thing is not, the focus here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not as we're walking past there or any other area, it's the focus here. You've That's out of this area, yeah, so please. you're not going to feel yeah. so ill. Can we go in here? Yeah. Oh, God, I hope this ear thing goes off. I'm sure it will. I think it's a condition. Between my heart, that and my heart attack. Well, I thought it was maybe... Me and Kieran were saying it must be a natural. What I'm looking out for, for later on tonight, is everything that happened on the walk around. So, the knocks the um, kind of sick feeling in one of the room, the ear kind of feeling and the kind of jaw and the beginning of the flu, those sort of symptoms. Uh, they've been implanted in everybody's head and now it becomes an exercise of suggestion. And what may happen is some of the other crew are going to have those experiences, but now you can't say whether they're paranormal or not because suggestion has been implanted and it's merely psychology. Um, but Given everything, given how excited everybody is, um, I can't wait. I, I genuinely can't wait to see what happens. I've just come back from one of the first vigils, and um, myself, Kieran, Richard Felix, and Stuart went to the tea rooms, which is over there. Seems very calm, doesn't it? And, uh... 
It does. But it's a build. No, but well, I mean, I disagree. I mean, from a from a medium's yeah, point yeah. of view, there's a build up of energy in here. Um, obviously, you know, I'm not going to walk in and it's just going to be wham bam. I've no. got it. No. It is building up. I can feel it building up on the top of my head. I can also feel it around my face. There's. Um, there was a gentleman here that used to work within this facility in this area, in this building, whatever this building was. Yeah. He's, he's got big old long uh, sideburns. Um, he's like, um, I wouldn't say he's a, um, a gamekeeper, but he's that type of character. Yeah. He sort of looked after the gardens. Um, I would say probably Victorian. Um, yeah. Yeah. But he's, he's talking about, um, well, the, sorry, the information I'm getting is, is about, um, you know, the old fashioned bear trap type of thing, you know. Yeah. To catch poachers. Yeah, yeah. And he was responsible for them. Right. Like metal. Yeah. Man traps. Man traps. Yeah. Like that. That's what I'm saying. Catch poachers. Yeah. Um, so it'd be useful to find out what this building was used for. If this spirit person is communicating with us and making the table vibrate, you're hearing our conversations. We need the energy to be much harder because we're assuming it's our pulse, our blood. But they're being very cautious about what we're doing, I think. I don't think she's a, a total believer in the communicating with the dead, which is actually quite ironic, mm. considering the situation. Some very frightening things have just been happening. We've just finished our first vigil, and I have to say, one of the best I've ever done. We've had so many sounds, like growling and um, light anomalies, light flashing. Uh, moans and uh, really, really frightening. But I suppose the worst thing was Kath clinging onto me like a limpet. She wouldn't leave me alone. But um, can't wait to get back in there. Scared to death, but brilliant. I've got shots of the cradle, but I don't know when. Because I thought the cradle might have rocked when we first came in, but it was against the bed. Well, no, me and John were in here, weren't we, John? Mm. And it was we sat in yeah. here. Is that what made the noise was? And they mean the, the, the thing rocking, like, yeah. like, it sounded like, it was more than just a knock, wasn't it? It was like a, a rock, so... I'm so sorry, God. I just don't want to doesn't make it. noise. Right. When it rocks, it, was, it could have been the noise of it moving. <laughs> Something just went across my screen. I crying out loud, I swore someone, someone was standing in that doorway then. I just saw the huge, a figure of a huge man silhouetted against that window. What? He's wandering about, he's sort of popping out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you about it. All right, Shit. That was thrown with real force, that was. Is that banging? That's a laughing banging. Isn't Sorry, it? I've so. just seen a flash on our hands. I've just seen a white flash on our hands. Oh, we keep seeing the like a t on our hands. Oh, fuck. What's up? Okay. What's the matter? Oh. I could have sworn someone was standing right next to me then, because I turned to look. I thought it was either but somebody big, it was either, you know, tall, it was either, like, David was standing close to me then, because I... The figure I saw was a foot taller than David. What's the matter? I've just got freezing. I'm absolutely freezing. My legs are freezing. Can you... I don't know if you can feel that. See, I can always feel that air, but... Yeah, no, that is cold. Please, if you don't want these people on your bed, I know you're there and I can see what you're doing. Try harder. These people need a bit more. They need a bit more. Touch them. You're going to scare them. Give. There's no point in using images. Touch them. She's using images to get you off of them, but you can't see them. So. What images? She's, she's doing that thing where they, she swoops on and then she turns into... Oh, nice. You know, skeleton. Well, show us it then. No, because I can see that now. <laughs> Sorry. Don't show it to us. Do, do that. I promise you, I will get off your bed and I will never in my life ever come anywhere near your bed ever again. You know I feel like feel like something's going around my neck. Are you alright? You know? You're alright. You're alright. <laughs> you alright, Kev? <laughs> you right? I really felt like something was creeping around, and as I said it again, and then you go. <laughs> Well, we asked her to prove it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's what I asked for, but she won't, she's done that, so... OK, throw me yeah, off the bed. Off bed. No. Go on, please, try something else. Touch, touch the person on the bed. Touch Carl, who's on the bed. Did she? Someone just touched my hand. Of 
I felt something really light. But it could have been. Do it again. Touch his hand again. Oh, someone's touching my ear. You know, I knew she was going to touch your ear. She said to me, I'm going to touch his ear. I've just been on one of the first uh, big vigils with Yvette, Carl, Stuart, John Gilbert, Kath and myself over in the house. And it was just absolutely jumping. There's loads and loads of noise, loads of voice stuff. We also heard a whining like a kid. You know when kids want something? Neither. We heard that. Um, a couple of growls, stuff being chucked, uh, footsteps, you name it, it was there. And what was interesting for me was Kath's reaction on the bed when she leapt up because she felt something was in the throat because exactly at that time I was asking for the lady who was doing this to affect them and she was I could see her plain as day moving around the bed and then I, I wanted to say to Carl she's gonna flick your ear or touch your ear but of course I can't because that's putting it into his head and you just have to trust me that when Carl's ear was flicked that just before that she said to me I'm gonna to touch his ear I've just been into the barn area with Yvette David Wells, Carl, and uh, John Gilbert on sound. Uh, we were only in there no more than no more than ten minutes maximum. Um, not a great deal was happening at the start, and uh, all of a sudden John Gilbert started taking funny turns. Why we don't know, um, because I certainly couldn't feel the presence in there. Um, no, it is pretty scary in there as well. You know what, John? And he's saying, leave me alone. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you're touching? Crumbs, you, I'm, it's right, I'll just point at you and you, you, you weren't, you were all over the place. Are you all right? Mm. You're right. You that? Can you set his camera for a second? Okay. Oh. John, wiggle your fingers into us. Just, you should, sure, John, John. Yeah, I, I'm all right. I just feel all my energy's gone. He was getting very, very heavy handed then, so I gave Kath the camera. Um, so there was Yvette and Kath actually doing camera at that time. Me and Carl were actually um, holding John Gilbert back, restraining him if you like. Uh, so it got to the point where it was getting a little bit violent, not too, not too much though. Um, so we started walking him outside and he was kind of restraining us from actually getting him outside at the same time. And then um, we got him underneath the, uh, the fence, we got him outside. He said, I'm fine. He said, I'm fine. I said, I'm just feeling biased. He said, what happened? So we said, we don't know. He said, you just took a funny turn. And all of a sudden, I got Gilbert's sound kit, put it on my shoulder, and I had his boom, so I was doing the sound at the time. And uh, out of the blue, he just turned around and started having a go at Carl. He literally got both hands and he pushed Carl through one of the barn doors. Um, which, which I don't know if Carl fell over or not. I couldn't really see with all the confusion because it was that dark. But I know he got Carl and he pushed him with all his force and Carl went through the doors. Uh, I've never seen him like that before. Uh, very strange. You didn't look like you. You really didn't. And, and I know everyone will say, well, you're on camera, you do look like you, but you didn't look like you. You're, it wasn't. It was more than just the look. It was yeah. like you. It was the persona. It was you weren't John Gilbert, and that I think that that's something that kind of scared me first because and I asked if you wanted to go go out, and you wouldn't. No, because of that, uh, like I said, then you never do. I thought I'm going to see this through and see where it takes me. It's the easiest thing in the world to just go out and sit down and think, what have I missed? What? What could I have gone through by staying in there? In some ways, I wish I hadn't because I, I didn't enjoy what happened. I still don't really know everything that happened. As much as we respect the work that they do, we do like to treat the mediums like any other crew member. And of course, that also means we can share a joke with them, even if sometimes it's either at David or Ian's expense. We're just about to go off and do uh, David's um, uh, walk around with David. Um, there are a couple of issues here, here already. I mean, David's already sort of been sensing stuff, but the biggest thing he sensed is um, we're, we're all concerned about, which is 
David's shoes. They curl up at the end. They don't, see, look. <laughs> they don't, look. I'm never wearing them ever again. I think they look lovely. He likes flash. It's a bit of a corny pose, but you know, there's a lot of. I want to do that. I've got boots on up to here. Right. Um, You've got something on the back of the heel there, Ian. No, the other one. Oh, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe I just fell for that. I don't, you cow. Um, I've enjoyed the place, it's a pleasure, it's a privilege to be allowed into places like this. And for me, ghosts and the history, absolutely fantastic. There's so much here, a lot of it is residual, I have to say. Um, but I think important nonetheless in building a picture of the place. What's interesting for me is there's an underlying... Uh, darkness is not a word I like to use, but there's an underlying current here. Underlying current, I can't even now get my finger on. It's been a great night, it really has. Well, I've enjoyed every second of it being here. Um, and I can't wait for the next one. And who knows, by the time you see us next time, we may have already caught um, a, a full manifestation of a ghost. So look, John. Both hundred percent, and it's drained the back one. The back one's on one, on on sort of on twenty percent. This one is on sixty. These would easily last by four pounds. How would you explain that? Well, that is how would I explain that? I say it's drained for some reason. That's drained twice, at least twice or three times as quickly as usual, because normally we get through a whole run, and we've only been to one place, haven't we? Yeah. We would normally we've got through two tapes and not had to change batteries before, and they've been when they've been full in the same state. But this time. This is drained maybe three times as there, there, are only, there are only two reasons for it. If you go down the paranormal route, then it's, it's like there's, there's, some, there's some energy, some energy feeding, off of, feeding off of it. If you go down the other end, the batteries are faulty. That is the only two options. And the tape would tape any sort of, as well. Would any, sort of, would any sort of electrical charge drain it? But there's nothing in there. I've been no. down there before. Electrical the... charge would drain it. The only thing you could possibly drain it would be some magnetic charge. It could possibly drain it, but it has to be very, very powerful. And the strongest part is upstairs in the landing, and that's not going to be strong but you'd enough you'd to reach over here, is it? Yeah. But you'd also have to have this right next to a very strong magnetic charge. Oh, right. Okay. The technical difficulties with the camera, because it's physical, um, it's physical evidence. I don't know if it's physical evidence of anything paranormal, but certainly you speak to Carl, you speak to John Dibley, and they're both people with uh, a lot of camera experience, and they said they've never seen anything like it before in terms of the batteries draining, but more importantly, the tape on John's camera kind of stopped starting. There's the little boy, I think it's a, you know, right? Sorry. <laughs> what was it? Oh, I don't know. Little boys running around. Is that what you saw or felt? No, I just felt uh, something here. Well, he's moving around. He is moving around. Um, thankfully, taken off the because he was presenting with those sodden clothes and a awful look. He's taken that off now. He's just like a little boy. Um, and there's a very stern woman. Oh, I don't like stern women. They scare me more than stern men. Yeah. Oh, God, this is so much You've worse. Had this. All the way around, it's getting worse. It's obviously associated to the house. What is it? It's like a stabbing pain just here, just right there. There's a, there's a stern, very, very... Um, she's very matriarchal, but she's still quite young. She's not an old woman, very authoritative woman, who's looking at me in a very sort of accusing manner. Well, why honest. would she look at you like that? Well, she's, she's trying to give me visual clues. Oh, what, uh, right, so It's a very see. judgmental way. She's just... Well, he was getting more stuff. And now it, it's... <sighs> you know, he's picking up accurate names. Names that we haven't got and we're finding out later on. Um, so we, we just... He picked up on a little boy that's, that, that was drowned here. Now, we, we did have that name. Um, and yet he's, he's actually picked up on the parents' name, which is something we had to find out. So even we didn't have a lot of that information that he's 
that he's picked up on. A henchman, like a henchman character. That's what I was saying. We've got to go. We need to go. <laughs> Are you still suffering? Well, I just had a quick ugh, piercing because one out here. I've just, I've just got it as well. It's like right under there, and there I've got. What have I just been doing out here? If it's been standing out here going with her jaw. Just like that. that. It's, it is. It's right under there and right on my ear. You know when you're trying to pop your eardrums yeah. and you go like that? That's yeah. what I've been doing. And yeah. It hurts like a gland. Yeah, yeah it... absolutely. Thanks. It's like a sharp pain there and a pain in my ear. See, when... Oh, it's so sore. Do you know, it's either broken neck or it could be... It can't be hanging because that's not... My prompt for hanging is just that burning here. The bizarre so thing is not... the focus here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not as we're walking past there or any other area, it's the focus here. You've That's out of this area, yeah, so please. you're not going to feel yeah. so ill. Can we go in here? Yeah. Oh, God, I hope this ear thing goes off. I'm sure it will. I think it's a condition. Between my heart, that and my heart attack. Well, I thought it was maybe me and Kieran were saying it must be a natural. What I'm looking out for, for later on tonight, is everything that happened on the walk around. So, the knocks the um, kind of sick feeling in one of the room, the ear kind of feeling and the kind of jaw and the beginning of a flu, those sort of symptoms, uh, they've been implanted in everybody's head and now it becomes an exercise of suggestion. And what may happen is some of the other crew are going to have those experiences, but now you can't say whether they're paranormal or not because suggestion has been implanted and it's merely psychology. Um, but Given everything, given how excited everybody is, um, I can't wait. I, I genuinely can't wait to see what happens. I've just come back from one of the first vigils, and um, myself, Kieran, Richard Felix, and Stuart went to the tea rooms, which is over there. Seems very calm, doesn't it? And, uh... It does. But it's a build no, but, but I mean I disagree. I mean from a from a medium yeah, point yeah. of view, there's a build up of energy in here. Um, obviously, you know, I'm not gonna walk in and it's just gonna be wham bam I've no, got it. No. It is building up, I can feel it building up on the top of my head. I can also feel it around my face there's um all of a sudden the camera's just turned itself off. Um, I've not turned it off. You you've honestly you've got to believe me. When you're standing in this mind you do actually feel as though there's someone in here with you. You know, you're not on your own, you know, there are eyes, but where they are, Christ only knows. Um, this is going to be a fantastic location. Just put in uh, David Wells' radio mic on. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with him today, he's been in a terrible mood. So not true. Uh, he's been... We're just trying to get on with it, we're trying to do our jobs. Poor Kath was trying to do his makeup and he was, no, don't do it like that, no, 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 not that, not that. You're such a liar! You're such See, a it's, liar. it's happening again, You're he's going liar. again. So they're not belonging to the house, don't feel as if they belong to the house. I think, actually, tell I I think the mother... What was that? I heard that. What was it? It was a... My tape just stopped for no reason, right? Yeah, that's... It's, that's it's not Is the that what you heard? Yeah. Can, can, can I just... Uh, I don't want to interrupt the batteries, I, I don't understand. I actually did a piece of camera on my own because something happened in here. And when I was doing the camera on the, the handheld mini camera, the whole thing turned off. I actually mentioned that on camera and that was just behind where you were, Eva. So it's coincidence with what's happened to John. and it's drained the back one. The back one's on one, on, on sort of, on 20%. This one is on 60%. These would easily last by four pounds. How would you explain that? Well, that is, how would I explain that? I say it's drained, for some reason, that's drained twice, at least twice or three times as quickly as usual, because normally we get through a whole run, and we've only been to one place, haven't we? Yeah. We would normally, minutes, we've got through two tapes and not had to change batteries before, and they've been, when they've been full in the same state. But this time, this is drained maybe three times as well. There, there, there are only two reasons for it. If you go down the paranormal route, then it's, it's like there's, there's, some, there's some energy, some energy feeding, off of, feeding off of it. If you go down the other end, 
that was the faulty, that is the only two options. And the tape, would tape any sort of, as well. Any sort of, would any sort of electrical charge drain it? But there's nothing in there, I've been no. around there before. What's electrical the... charge wouldn't drain it. The only thing you could possibly drain it would be it's a magnetic charge. It could possibly drain it, but it has to be very, very powerful. And the strongest part is upstairs in the landing, and that's not going to be strong but you'd enough you'd to reach to... over here, is it? Yeah. But you'd also have to have this right next to a very strong magnetic oh, charge. Right. Okay. The technical difficulties with the camera, because it's physical, um, it's physical evidence. I don't know if it's physical evidence of anything paranormal, but certainly... It's a natural... What I'm looking out for, for later on tonight, is everything that happened on the walk around. So, the knocks, the um, kind of sick feeling in one of the room, the ear, kind of feeling and the kind of jaw and the beginning of a flu, those sort of symptoms, uh, they've been implanted in everybody's head and now it becomes an exercise of suggestion. And what may happen is some of the other crew are going to have those experiences, but now you can't say whether they're paranormal or not because suggestion has been implanted and it's merely psychology. Um, but given everything, given how excited everybody is, um, I can't wait. I, I genuinely can't wait to see what happens. I've just come back from one of the first vigils and um, myself, Kieran, Richard Felix and Stuart went to the tea rooms, which is over there. Seems very calm, doesn't it? And, um... It does. But it's a build no, but, but I mean I disagree. I mean from a from a medium yeah, point yeah. of view, there's a build up of energy in here. Um, obviously, you know, I'm not gonna walk in and it's just gonna be wham bam I've no, got it. No. It's building up I can feel it building up on the top of my head. I can also feel it around my face. There's um there was a gentleman here that used to work within this facility in this area, in this building, whatever this building was. Yeah. He's, he's got big old long uh, sideburns. Um he's like um I wouldn't say he's a, um, a gamekeeper, but he's that type of character. Yeah. He sort of looked after the gardens. Um, I would say probably Victorian. Um, yeah. Yeah. But he's he's talking about um, well, the, sorry, the information I'm getting is, is about um, you know the old-fashioned bear trap type of thing. You know, yeah, to catch poachers. Yeah, yeah. He was responsible for them. Right. Metal. Yeah. Man traps. Man traps. Yeah. Like that. That's what I'm seeing. Catch approaches. Yeah. Um, so it'd be useful to find out what this building was used for. If this spirit person is communicating with us and making the table vibrate, you're hearing our conversations. We need the energy to be much harder because we're assuming it's our pulse, our blood. But they're being very cautious about what we're doing. I think. I don't think she's a, a total believer in the communicating with the dead, which is actually quite ironic. <laughs> Mm. considering the situation. Some very frightening things have just been happening. We've just finished our first vigil, and I have to say, one of the best I've ever done. We've had so many sounds, like growling and um, light anomalies, light flashing, uh, moans and... Oh, really, really frightening, but I suppose the worst thing was Kath clinging onto me like a limpet. She wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah, man traps. Man traps, yeah. like that, that's what I'm seeing. Catch approaches, yeah. Um, so it'd be useful to find out what this building was used for. If this spirit person is communicating with us and making the table vibrate, you're hearing our conversations, we need the energy to be much harder because we're assuming it's our pulse, our blood. But they're being very cautious about what we're doing, I think. I don't think she's a, a total believer in the communicating with the dead, which is actually quite ironic, mm. considering the situation. Some very frightening things have just been happening. We've just finished our first vigil, and I have to say, one of the best I've ever done. We've had so many sounds, like growling and um, light anomalies, light flashing, uh, moans and uh, really, really frightening. But I suppose the worst thing was Kath clinging onto me like a limpet. She wouldn't leave me alone. But um, can't wait to get back in there. Scared to death, but brilliant. I've got shots of the cradle, but I don't know when. Because I thought the cradle might have rocked when we first came in, but it was against the bed. Well, no, me and John were in here, weren't we, John? Mm. And it was we sat in yeah. here. Is that what made of the noise was? 
notes. And I mean, the, the, the thing rocking, like, yeah. that, it sounded like it was more than just a knock, wasn't it? It was like a, a rock, so. It's so sorry, it just don't doesn't rock. make it's noise. Right. When it rocks, it, was, it could have been the noise of it moving. <laughs> Something just went across my screen. Crying out loud, I swore someone, someone was standing in that doorway then. I just saw the huge a figure of a huge man silhouetted against that window. What? He's wandering about, he's sort of popping in. <coughs> oh, Alright, okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you about it. Alright, I mean. Shit. That was thrown with real force, that was. That's a laughing bang. Sorry, I've just seen a flash on our hands. I've just seen a white flash on our hands. Oh, we keep seeing like a t on our hands. Oh, fuck. What's up? What's the matter? I could have sworn someone was standing right next to me then, because I turned to a look. I thought it was either but somebody big, it was either you know, tall, it was either like David was standing close to me then. Cause I the figure I saw was a foot taller than David. What's the matter? I've just got freezing. I'm absolutely freezing. My legs are freezing. Can you... I don't know if you can feel that. See, I can always feel that air, but... Yeah, no, it is cold. Please, if you don't want these people on your bed, I know you're there and I can see what you're doing. Try harder. These people need a bit more. They need a bit more. Touch them. 